Hello. Uh, I have been wanting to make this video for a while. Um, I believe I got the idea to make it last summer, and I haven't gotten around to it until now. Forgive me if I am looking down away from the camera. Um, I have some notes written down here, um, so bear with me. Um, and I was watching one of those 100 years of whatever videos, and I noticed something interesting. Um, and this isn't going to be a rant about how inaccurate those videos are, I'll save that for later. Um, because those videos do... <laughs> they're, they're something. Um, but I'm not, I'm not going to show the video that I'm talking about, uh, because I don't want to get sued, but I'll link to it down below. But, uh, basically though, at the end of the video, it ran backwards through time, so started in, in 2010 and then went to 2000 and 1990, and etc. And, and showed all of the women from these different decades just looking confident and self-satisfied and, and fulfilled. Um, but it, when it got to the point where it should have showed the woman from 1910 looking confident and, and fulfilled, it cut back to the woman from 2010. Now, odds are the people who made this video didn't mean anything by this, but even if they didn't mean anything by it, it is indicative of a larger trend that I've noticed circulating. And, and this isn't a new trend by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but there's this sort of idea that women, all women pre-1920, were these simpering, oppressed, shrinking violets who were forced to live these these miserable existences for the at the at the whim at the at the discretion of men. Now, first, let me say that yes, women in the past had fewer rights than women do now. In the eyes of the law, women were second-class citizens. But I find it incredible that people really think so little of women as to suppose that generations and generations of women were able to be forced into this place of submissive servitude. These are women who were, who were mothers. These are women who walked across the country next to their covered wagons because the pioneers oftentimes did not ride in the wagons. They walked next to them to lighten the load on the oxen and horses. These are women who, who set up homesteads on the foreign grounds and, 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 and completely built their new lives. These are women who became doctors and, and lawyers and politicians and farmers and teachers and businesswomen and, and engineers and architects and scientists. And these are women who fought for the right to vote and were jailed and beaten and force-fed, which is a very violent and painful process. Um, these are women who joined the army to fight for their country. Very, very fascinating. A lot of women actually during the Civil War disguised themselves as men and, and fought in, in the army. Um, these are women who were slaves. I mean, these are women who were bought and sold like livestock and, and were whipped and forced to do backbreaking work and who had their children ripped away from them and sold into slavery. And these are women who ran the Underground Railroad and who fought for the abolition of slavery. And these women did all of these things in spite of the fact that they were not equal citizens in the eyes of the law. Now look me in the eye and tell me that that is not, those are not the actions of incredibly strong and self-driven people. I mean, this idea that, that Victorian women and Edwardian women were just these oppressed and, oh, oh no, oh no, I couldn't possibly, it's very, very untrue. I mean, these, these are women who, who made, made lives for themselves and did it against the odds. So, so how, I mean, how dare anybody suggest that these women were, were anything less than spectacular? Because these women were strong and intelligent and courageous women who made lives for themselves against the odds. Uh, in the words of Sojourner Truth, quote, that man over there says women need to be helped into carriages and lifted over ditches and have the best place everywhere. Nobody helps me into carriages or over mud puddles or gives me any best place. And ain't I a woman? Look at me. Look at my arm. I've plowed and planted and gathered into barns, and no man could head me. And ain't I a woman? I could work as much and eat as much as any man, while well, I could get it, and bear the lash as well. And ain't I a woman? I've borne three children and seen most all sold off into slavery. And when I cried out my mother's grief, none but Jesus heard me. And ain't I a woman? So, these women saw the problems within society and also the problems within their own lives, and they fought tirelessly to rectify these problems and to build a better world. And to suggest that there are these submissive and simpering creatures 
who were dominated and defeated by the men of the world is, I believe, the greatest insult that anybody could ever, ever give to these people. Um, I would also like to point out that we in the 21st century have very little right to feel puffed up with pride about the progress that we have made in women's rights, because, I mean, the progress that we've made is, quite frankly, pitiful. Um, we live in a world in which women are not paid as much as men, uh, a world in which fewer than 1% of rapists are convicted of a crime, in a world in which women are discouraged from taking up careers in sciences and politics. Uh, we live in a world in which it is acceptable for random men to yell comments about women's bodies at them in public. Uh, we live in a world where a man can admit to sexually harassing women and be elected president of the United States. Um, we live in a world in which women are afraid to go out at night. I still remember when my mother taught me how to walk home from school with my keys in between my fingers. So I wanted to finish this video with a quote from uh, not, for, not For Ourselves Alone, which is a 1999 Ken Burns documentary about Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Susan B. Anthony. Unfortunately, I was unable to find the quote, but I do remember the basic gist of it. So the documentary included commentary from two women who uh, remembered when women got the vote. And at the end, one of them said something along the lines of, uh, when we got the vote, we had hoped that it would be a big improvement. It would make a big improvement in the lives of women, but it hasn't changed as much as we'd hoped. I am aware that this video got a little bit political. Uh, I hasten to assure everybody that I did not mean any offense to anybody. Uh, I do lean to the left, but I uh, have nothing against people who lean to the right either. I think that one of the most damaging things that is affecting our country right now is this extreme political polarization. Um, I know that this was a bit, a bit heavier than my other videos, um, but it's something about which I feel very passionate because it, it just it, it, it irritates me and offends me to no end to hear people kind of referring to Victorian women as these sad, oppressed creatures when they, when they really were not. They were very strong and very powerful people. Um, so I, I, I really wanted to talk about that. Um, my next video will be more in keeping with my normal <laughs> upbeat theme, but even so, I hope you did enjoy this one. Um, if you uh, have anything that you want to disagree, that you disagree with, or you want to add anything to what I've said, uh, or if you just want to just say something else unrelated, please let me know in the comments. I so, so much love reading your comments. That was not good English. I absolutely love reading your comments. They're absolutely wonderful. Um, so, yeah, I hope you uh, enjoyed this video, and I, I hope that I, I hope that I made sense. Um, I'll see you next time.